Today, I had the great pleasure to speak with Randy Kirk, who is a serial entrepreneur and also a serial author of books, and of course, the author of The Elon Musk Mission, which is right over there <laughs> on my bookshelf. I contributed a couple of chapters to it. I'm very proud about that. Anyway, we spoke today about the moats that are expressed in the book, in other words, the things that Tesla has that make them basically uncatchable. But then we get into some really interesting speculation about whether Tesla should should think about spinning off the entire Optimus entity into a new corporation and potentially others as well. Let's take a look. Hey, y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I am super happy to have Randy Kirk with me on my channel. I have done a talk with you previously with uh, with a couple of other people about the new book, The Elon Musk Mission, and I wanted to get you back to talk about a few other things today and, you know, pick your brain a little bit about, I guess we could start with, like, Maybe your favorite one of the 21 moats that are in the book or the most underappreciated one or something like that. And then I have a feeling I know what that's going to be. And then we can spin off and talk about some other stuff. Because hint, hint, this is not my shirt. This is actually Farzad Mizbahi's shirt, but this is a great shirt. It's, it says <laughs> the robots are coming on the side. So I'm flogging his merchandise nice. on my channel. Nice. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, so fire away. Yeah. So first of all, very, very nice to see you again. Thank you for being nice to here. See you as well. Thank yeah. you for, ha for having me on. Sure. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, just go ahead and tell me like what you think the most underappreciated of the moats in the book is. Well, you know, I, I think we should start, uh, interestingly, maybe we should start by talking about what is a moat. Okay. I was, That's a good I idea. I was pretty shocked. I was pretty shocked uh, in a couple of situations I was in when writing the book to have people go, well, what exactly do you mean by a moat? Okay. Um, and I think if you're not in business, if you're not running a business or marketing in a business, you may not think about what a moat really is. So just briefly, you know, a moat typically for most companies is something that's going to keep the uh, competition at bay, something that allows you to have more flexibility in pricing, uh, something that allows right. you to uh, um, capture markets that maybe nobody else that's competitive to you can capture because you've got something that they can't duplicate. So the most right. common one is a patent. That's the most right. common. You know, if you've got a patent, you get your 17 years where you've got that moat. Now, right. that moat might be trans. Uh, you might be able to get past that moat, get over the crocodiles and past the products, <laughs> you know, and get into the castle. Um, if you come up with a variation of the patent or you come up with something that right. goes around the patent or something that's completely new that does the same thing, but uh, but uh, kills your kills your dream. Okay, right. Most companies have no moats. I would okay. say, in my experience, I would say ninety nine percent of companies have no moat, other than maybe the skill set of the owner. Okay, so you know, maybe you're a CPA, uh, you're a really good CPA, and you can really right. save people money on their taxes. That's your only moat. Right. Uh, most companies have no moats. Okay. Or I'm potentially, smoking. I guess, inertia or something that maybe not that many people want to do whatever business you're in. That's so, a really yeah. good moat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, would the, that would be the CPA, the tax. Yeah, exactly. Tax That's what I was yeah, as yeah. soon as you said CPA, I was like, oh, I don't want to do that job. So you guys, somebody else can handle that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what a moat is. And and even big companies commonly have no moats. Um, and and maybe they're and, and they're just really good at marketing. Are they really good at manufacturing? Are they really good at find uh, it's sourcing materials overseas and getting stuff in for a good price or something? So there's a lot of possible moats uh, that are kind of minor moats that that you wouldn't really throw out as being a very significant moat. But a patent or a trademark or a great brand or you know some of these other things are really solid moats. Okay. Well, Tesla has 21 identified in the book <laughs> right right 21 moats after we finished the book we identified another one i think it was actually uh brian mm. wong that right. said after right. we finished it he goes well there's a moat you missed and that was the moat of all these companies having uh cross capability yes, that they share yes. with one another yes who has yes. that 
Right. You know, yeah, it's, it's like cool. when Tesla wants to make their Cybertruck, they can get the steel from SpaceX because SpaceX has been developing a new alloy of steel. So it's like, well, that's a pretty cool moat. So yeah, that's and true. SpaceX <laughs> called on on uh, on Tesla for their AI uh, capabilities. Right. Now right. Twitter is calling on Tesla for right. their uh, some of their AI and also just coding skills. Right. Um. So yeah. Right. So you have this inner company thing, which is phenomenal right how many companies have that moat so those are moats that's a good and, one and uh and one of the reasons i brought up the moats in the book is because what we tried to do in the book was do things that nobody else was doing yeah yeah and that book is chock full of things that nobody else is talking about right nobody else right. is talking about 21 or 22 now moats <laughs> right <laughs> nobody's <laughs> talking about the 12 different marketing levers yeah that they haven't yeah. pulled yet okay when they have one marketing skill that they've used so far they really only have one marketing skill that they've used and that's wom right, right. only marketers know what that means word of mouth <laughs> it is the Definitely. best marketing skill you could possibly have right but right. right now that's the only one they need which leaves just advertising as yeah. a marketing lever that you right. can pull. So there's 12 marketing levers that we identify in the book also, which nobody's talking about. Right. So there's lots and lots and lots of stuff like that. We get into uh, things about AI and about agile and uh, their manufacturing capabilities yeah. and whatnot that really nobody's talking about. So that's why people should buy the book. <laughs> exactly. And it's not that much. And by the way, is the audio book available yet? Or is it? Uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I can't believe it. You as know. soon as it's available, I'll put a link to that as well as the hard copies. In, uh, it's the, now been Kindle, seven paperback, days. Hardback. Seven, seven days. days. Has it really? Oh, yeah, yeah, and it yeah, hasn't yeah. been approved yet. My it goodness. hasn't been approved yet. Yeah, well, it's, so. it is it is 350 pages long. Yeah. It is a seven-hour um uh audio audio book. book right so it may take them longer to do a seven 70 hour right. i mean seven hour than it does a, a shorter yeah. book yeah. yeah so yeah good value for the money right because i think the kindle edition is like four bucks right it's like <laughs> i think yeah we got it at 3.99 <laughs> right now yeah we're, it's crazy be like elon <laughs> should be like elon we're announcing today <laughs> right if you don't buy it this week, next week it's fifteen hundred dollars. Exactly, we're going. We're gonna we're gonna raise it like the cost of uh, full self driving. There you go. <laughs> I love it. So anyway, cool. So yeah. Uh, so so now that we've defined a moat, what right. is you know? Tell me tell me about this underappreciated one, and maybe we can spin off from there. So okay, the under underappreciated moat is fast iteration. Okay. All right, so a typical car company really only iterates on their model, the models that are in front of them. They typically only iterate. We should should we define iterate? Uh, <laughs> they only change sure. the model. They right. only make change changes the yes. model <laughs> in any significant way once a year. Right. And okay. I, I mean, really, realistically speaking, it's once every five years. You I, know? Get, yeah. I yeah. was just going to say that iteration <laughs> that they do once a year might be a slightly different shaped taillight. <laughs> right, right. It isn't usually anything that's drivetrain related or electronics related or some big upgrade in their music system or something like that. So, right. so we're looking at, as you mentioned, three to five years between major changes in, in their models. But their iterations in terms of smaller things are even those are a year. Right. Right. And we have Tesla that iterates <laughs> hourly. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Daily. <laughs> Daily. The car that I got, my Model Y that I got for my wife uh, a year and a half ago, almost two years. No, wait. <laughs> time flies by when you're having a right good time. right ours anyway, is almost two yeah, years old yeah almost two years we got ours yeah. december december 20 yeah oh, so yeah so ours are almost like siblings well, <laughs> so there, you look at that but they might they're, yeah. they're probably different <laughs> oh gosh of course yeah <laughs> mine's <laughs> mine's seven days earlier than yours so of course there's a bunch of stuff that's in yours that's not even in mine so there you go <laughs> yeah yeah so Joe Justice, uh, who uh, we interviewed for the book, actually uh, Lars interviewed for the book, and we have lots right. of quotes and information from Joe Justice, uh, 
who in who basically is the the agile guru of the country. Uh, Joe uh, gave us lots of information and, and mentioned uh, we we had different numbers from time to time, but let's say at least twenty significant iterations a day, right? In terms of right. part iterations, not counting software, right? So uh, it's it's just absolutely remarkable. There are no companies, no, no, no companies. nobody. No. Uh, one of the things Joe Justice said was, and he's been teaching agile uh, techniques to other companies so that they can iterate more frequently. One of the things he said was, he can't teach agile to Tesla anymore because they are beyond <laughs> agile. Right. They're, they're, they're on another, they're on a completely right. different plane yeah. than agile. We so, have, you know, my, my, my tiny little startup company and you're a serial entrepreneur, I know. So you've gotten a lot of these, but you know, we work really hard to be agile and our sprints are like a week long and it seems like Tesla sprints are maybe three hours, like right. maybe. <laughs> it's yeah, just crazy. I'm real. like, how, people, how do you people, even manage that? <laughs> like, it's people, nuts. People think you're hyperbolizing right now. Yeah, their sprints no, are three hours. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. their typical sprint. Three hours. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's it's just nuts. I, I mean, I I can't even wrap my head around the problem in three hours, much less solve it. It's just crazy. <laughs> so I, I manufactured plastic products for 28 years, and the plastic products always have a mold. Okay, right. so you're. Right. You you go out and you spend fifteen or twenty thousand dollars for a mold, and then you know you work really hard to get that mold perfect. Right now, that's fifteen or twenty thousand. That's not a huge amount of money, but it's it was a huge amount of money to a small factory. Yeah, and you spend yeah. that money, and then you hope that that mold lasts you seven, eight, nine years without right. touching it. Right. Okay? Right. <laughs> Elon Musk goes out and he buys. How much do we think that that gigacast mold cost? I mean, they're kind of bespoke almost. I, I mean, really, I think they are. So who even knows what that mold <laughs> costs? And yet they're yeah. changing that mold on right. the fly. They've yeah. already yeah. made major changes to that gigacasting mold. I mean, that would have never occurred to me to right. change. My, now, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. Honestly, we changed the mold from time to time. But then you're faced with... Do you solder over the part that you don't need anymore right. and then right. dig it out again? Do yeah. you are you able to dig out more? I mean, you have all these issues yeah. about how to save this twenty thousand dollar mold rather than right. just throwing it away. Right. Um, he doesn't care if yeah. it's time to yeah. make the change. It's time to make the change, and they just do it. Right. And just imagine. I mean, you can't solder over something where you're pressing aluminum into right you can do this with plastic I, it's like i don't even really have a way of conceptualizing how insane it is to change a mold that you're casting molten aluminum into because it can't be easy to do and it's got to be molten, hard and casting molten aluminum into it in less than a second yeah yeah the entire yeah. time that it takes from one end to the other of the mold right. is less than a second i mean yeah. it's just crazy yeah. yeah. So this is, so when you talk, when people talk about, should I invest in, in tests? I mean, I'm not a, we're not, we're not financial advisors here. You know, yeah. people are like, well, I don't know whether I should invest in Tesla. You know, what makes them any different than anybody else? Well, right. iterating on a car. Right. On, on the, at the part level, 20 times a day. Right. That's just <laughs> nuts. It's nuts. Okay. Besides, it's absolutely nuts. I would invest in Tesla just because of the Christmas, it's, it's Christmas time again, and right. we'll get to do our Christmas music with the lights. Yes. Light oh, show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I kind so of forgotten in, about that since last Christmas, but yeah. Right. So in the neighborhood, as soon as the as soon as it's dark, I'll be putting my Tesla out front, <laughs> and, <laughs> and turning on turning on the the, uh, the light show, and the neighbors will, will all go, "What in the world is going on here?" <laughs> What is Randy doing? That crazy neighbor we have. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so rapid iteration. <clears throat> we got a chance to see rapid iteration at its, I mean, yeah, almost beyond conception. I understand you know a little bit about robotics. <laughs> right. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Again, mostly from the software side, but I do okay. some tinkering right. with hardware. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> but you, uh, I think I remember you saying on a couple of YouTube videos that you were extremely impressed by what you saw at AI Day too. Right. Um, 
in terms of bringing out a finished first out type bolted together with off the shelf parts robot. Right. That would have been something that could walk. Yeah. 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 Crazy. That would have been crazy. That would have been amazing. And then (laughs) then, (laughs) another robot made with, made with brand built from the ground up, um, 3d printed, right. Um, brand new actuators, brand new motors, um, that were designed specifically for the product as right. well as the exterior and the, I mean, yeah, it, it honestly looked at that. So the first one looked like a, like a, you know, some sort of like 1980s weird science type <laughs> movie experiment, right? Obviously just, just put together with whatever they had <laughs> duct tape and hope, I guess. But then the second, it was amazing just one iteration later, it was like, that looks like a finished robot already. That looks like something that could be doing useful work. Now, I'm sure whatever iteration number three or 57 by at this point is going to be, is going to look substantially different again. But it was just, it was unbelievable to see not just how quickly they're iterating, but how like, it's not like much like this. Yeah. It's like these huge changes in the iteration. Well, and then, and so then as a, as a, as somebody who ran a factory for, tw- you know, for 28 yeah. years, for me to, fi- to take a look at that and think, okay, let's say just for fun that they got that first uh, Optimus up and ready to go um, six months before AI day two. Let's say that one was finished six months before AI day right. two. Right. Then in that six months, you were, designing, laying out, CAD camming, um, testing, um, right. putting through us. I don't know anything about it because that's your side of the, <laughs> of the, but, you know, <laughs> testing on, you know, with, with some kind of modeling. Right. And then spitting out a 3D part, then testing that with other 3D parts, and then not, they're not fitting, not working, needing to right. do it slightly different, going back and doing the, I mean, on each of those right. parts, and times, there's lots. how many <laughs> yeah. parts? And let's not forget about the actuators because those actuators in the second robot were ground up, built from scratch, right. which, you know, that means in about a year, they, and building electric motors that are super high precision, high torque, low rotational. I mean, all of that stuff is amazingly complicated and they did, they get, they, what was it? Six of them. They have six different motors that they use. So they yeah. figured out what they needed. They needed, they figured out what the parameters were. They figured out what the size restrictions were. They modeled these things, they prototyped them and then they built them. And yeah, you know, you're talking about like six major steps in the course of maybe a year, it, it, maybe a little less, who knows? And that's, that's nuts. Only the hardware side. Yeah, and then you yeah, and then you got the, the hard thing, the software. Yeah. You got to get the thing to actually, you know, water the plants. I'm sorry for right. those of you who haven't seen the video. <laughs> you know, this this robot went over and watered the plants and picked up parts and moved the parts to another location, right. precisely put it down where it needed to go. Walked around the uh, walked around the office and didn't bump into desks. I mean, all of that had to be done on the software side, working with the hardware right. And, right. and and being able to view and see the environment that it was in and make decisions. Yeah, yeah. All and of course, the- they had a big head start because they could use full self-driving and they could just kind of transport it. But that's, you know, that only gets you so far. And then they had to teach new ways. The whole thing with the, the modeling thing where the guy could like pick things up and sort of show the robot, that was all designed from scratch. Um, the vision system that was using the occupancy networks inside buildings was obviously very different from the other one. Right. The the ability of the robot to handle indoor environments was different in terms of software. Like, I mean, they said Andre Carpathy joked about this, that uh, I think he was talking to Lex Friedman. He was doing an interview and he said that the first idea they were going to do was have Optimus. Uh, the demos were going to be outside in the parking lot. Because the full self driving was trained on the outdoor parking lots, and so right. he said he's like they didn't know if they could make it work indoors, and they got that working too. So you know these these are all just incredibly large steps. And one little thing, I don't know if you know this, but there are actually at AI Day uh, 2022. So this was a month and a half ago now, but there were four right. prototypes, not not two. Oh wow! So yeah, there was Bumblebee, 
right. which was the videos. So if you look at the videos versus what actually came out and walked, they look different from each other. So okay. Bumblebee to Bumble C. So there was a significant right. iteration in the quality there. And then they have what's called AI1 and AI2. And the one that we saw was AI2, the, the one with mm. the metal plate in front. So I don't yeah. know that anybody's seen AI1. Mm. It was probably an initial prototype with the new material and all that kind of stuff. But you know, at this point, who knows what they've got? They've got AI27 up and running or something, right? <laughs> at the speed that they iterate, I mean, it's been six weeks, so they've probably got at least two two more prototypes out. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, and so then that then that leads to okay, that leads to my a couple of my big questions, and I, I again, what we try to do, I know what you try to do on your channel, what I try to do in the books. Um, I'll probably start putting my channel back together again too so i'll have a few videos <laughs> right. coming out um but what we try to do what i'm trying to do is i want to bring something fresh right i you know i'm hoping today that we that we're doing things that people go oh my gosh i hadn't thought of that yeah um, exactly and so the so the next part of that story is to me is i think i believe that there will be a thousand hand-built robots built this year i'm sorry 2023 2023. Okay. okay. So I don't think they'll build more than a thousand. Maybe the number's right. 500, maybe the number's 1200, but right. I don't think they'll hand build, hand build more than a thousand robots right. before they start trying to put it into a factory mode. Oh yeah. Build them in a factory environment. Right. So if you build a thousand of them and you turn them loose, <laughs> so to speak, <laughs> let's, let's hope very slowly. <laughs> so yeah. you turn them, you turn them loose in the Tesla factory in the SpaceX factory, uh, in the, uh, in, who knows, maybe even over at uh, the boring company factory, whatever, but you turn them loose and you start putting them into circumstances that they can handle. I think most people, I, I mean, really smart people that right. know a lot about robotics I think are underestimating the useful case for the optimist right now. I mean, yeah, yeah, probably yeah. this week. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I'm sure you've seen Scott Walter. I've talked to him, the 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 yes, factory robotics. Yes. Yeah. I he is he is very last, much I didn't oh, see yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but anyway. I got to see that. I but he's watch that. he's very much of the opinion, like you are, that that, and he's an expert in this area. Right. He's like, look, these things could practically be doing this today, like you know, he's like, put them in a cage, so in case they go berserk, they can't get out or anything, right? <laughs> but he's, you know, he, you have to put robots in cages right now, anyway, the big fanox and stuff. Right. Um, but but you put them in a cage and and. Put them so you have a cell with humans doing some job, right? You create a cell next to it with Optimus doing some job, right? And you just iterate on Optimus until it gets faster than the people. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's it's a situation yeah. where you could do that today. And, right? and so I've, I've been trying to think of ways to to talk about this where the average human at home, the person who has no science, they've never tried to build a right. robot, they've never ran a run a factory a way that they could kind of get what I'm trying to explain here. So I've come up with a way. I okay. recently, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a business consultant. I go into factories or into wholesale businesses or whatever and help them to run their businesses better, marketing, whatever. So right. one of my recent clients had a silk screen uh, t-shirt business. So okay. he, he get, you know, probably uh, 5,000 t-shirts a day come in and, right. and they, you know, uh, <laughs> still screen on them and <laughs> like your like your t-shirt right there exactly right okay most of us let's say a big percentage of the people listening probably at some time or another have gotten one of those transfers right. and they've done <laughs> yeah. uh, they've done a t-shirt at home yeah so they have a little bit of an idea of what it, it's exactly the same except a right. little more automated in a in, <laughs> this guy was fairly automated but right. you have to pick up the t-shirt and put it onto an ironing board. Right. You, you have to smooth it out. Smooth out the wrinkles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Smooth out the wrinkles that because you can't iron it until you get those wrinkles out. Then you take your iron or your press or whatever it might be and you press it. Okay. Now you need to shake it out and then you dry it. And right. you have to put it through some kind of a drying process or you let it sit until it's dry and, and cool. And now you put it, back onto some kind of a thing where you can lay it out where it's nice and ironed 
and now you put whatever you're going to transfer and now you hit it with the heat press again or with the iron again and you do the transfer right. those are the steps right i had to i have to believe <laughs> that optimus standing mm. in one location could reach over pick up a t-shirt <laughs> lay it down smooth on it a, smooth it out <laughs> right <laughs> pull a press down put right. it over here on the dryer some other optimist to bring the dry the, the 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 ones that are back that are now fluffed up and ready to go put it back on the on the press bring over and lay down a uh, uh some kind of a transfer and right. then pull down the press again and take off i don't think that that would be hard to teach optimists to do right now right right are close the, yeah the, the only thing that would be complicated is the fact that they're squishy <laughs> robots robots hate squishy things but optimus right. is not a regular robot it can right. handle that stuff right. and especially i think when you do it industrially it's not like you're you, there's usually like a form that you put it on so it's kind of a tight squeeze which causes the wrinkles to come out automatically so yes yeah. yes or no but even if you had to smooth it out i mean i yeah. think the smoothing out thing would not anyway maybe there's yeah, a, maybe he but, have a tool maybe he has to pick up a tool to smooth it out i don't right. know but right <laughs> I don't think it would be that hard to do. And that is a fairly complex set of things to accomplish yeah. Yeah. compared to taking the right product off a shelf and putting it in a putting it into a, a bucket so that it can be transferred right. to the shipping department or something. Right. So I'm looking at I tried to come up with something complex that people do at home. Right. <laughs> yeah. That I think Optimus could do very soon. Right. Right. And yeah. And you think about it too. I mean, a lot of people are like, well, the battery won't last and stuff. But if you look at a, a, a job like that, it could literally be plugged in the entire time. Like you just, <laughs> yeah. you just run a cable out the back. Right. I mean, it's no big deal because it's pretty much standing there. It's not really moving. It's not very moving, far. It's not moving yeah. around. Right. So, but yeah. you could, but you could in a million years, it, you couldn't automate that process. Yeah. You couldn't yeah. set up some, you know, part that comes in and picks that up and moves it it may maybe but i mean it would cost right. hundreds of thousands of dollars right and that's the beauty of optimus right. is that it's he's not going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars right and he have a huge environment and thing that has to be created in order to make all that work and then yeah. all those little parts are always going wrong and then <laughs> yeah yeah nobody i'm going to do this you're going to hate me i used to <laughs> Because nobody's going to understand this example I'm going to give, and then okay. it's going to sound stupid. I, I, but I'm going to. <laughs> so I used. I, I started my life in college. I was uh, in a print shop. Yeah. And in the print shop in the old days, they had these automatic collators. Maybe they still do. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But these collators went up and down. You would you would have twelve trays, and they and the collator would go up and down, and it would just uh, a little roller would come out and and pull off the uh, individual sheets, put it into a thing, and then staple it, and then move that out of the way. And right. these things were really automatic, and they could go for minutes. No, no. <laughs> Sometimes they would go for an hour without right. screwing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. So you would leave this thing. You would, you would right. leave it alone because it's working fine. Yeah. <laughs> and then go over and you know, start working on some other machine that needed more attention and you just right. have an eye out over here right. until the paper right. was flying. Yeah, all over exactly. The <laughs> you usually, I had a feeling probably when the collator went out, you would know. <laughs> you would know, but it's, you have to get over there. You have to stop right. it. I mean, right. But uh, anyway, that's, but that's typical of things that are done by automated equipment. Right. One little mistake, one little one little thing breaks, one little thing gets out of alignment, one little right. thing goes cattywampus, and all of a sudden you're making a lot of them that are wrong, right. or it's backing up the entire system and things are breaking down in multiple places. Um, right. So this is, this is a again, one of the things that people aren't talking about because most people don't have factory experience. Yeah. So they're not recognizing the beauty of Optimus is that Optimus is doing this thing and if he stops doing this thing and there's a problem he can push a button and stop the line right um he can he can uh, 
recognize, optimists can recognize that there's something wrong and maybe even be able to make an adjustment to make it right. 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 I mean, it just goes on and on. And yeah, it's not a hundred thousand yeah. dollars or two hundred thousand dollars to employ it. Right. Yeah. And and I, I always also think, I mean, it's very important because I think everybody kind of thinks of those robots like the kukas and the you know, the things that are like eh, 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 and right, it picks right, it up right, and moves right, it over right. here, right? But if this if this pen is off by like a couple of millimeters, it misses. You know, and this is something where a robot that can see and actually understand the world is like, oh, it's there. I'll move over right. here and grab it. So, exactly. you know, the the flexibility of this robot, it's a, it, it won't be like probably will never be as good as a dedicated robot in terms of speed to do yeah. a very specific task, especially right. if it's something very heavy. Right. But but what it will be able to do is you'll be able to just drop it in and say, you know, OK, a person's doing this watch them for 20 minutes, see what they do that takes them 45 seconds every time to do the same thing or whatever it is, right. and then step in and start doing that yourself. And that's something you cannot do with a current generation of robots. <laughs> no, so, <yeah. laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. And, 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 and again, that, and if the guy, if the robot is, the, if the optimist is the right product right, for the particular task, but it's slow. And even after after it's trained for a while, it can't get up to the speed that you need it to. Right. You just put a second robot in. You mm -hmm. just put two optimists on that task. That's true. I mean, this is this this is the, an, another beauty of it, as opposed to when you automate some task in a factory that has a very specific thing that it does, and right. you need more of it. No, you have to go spend another two hundred thousand dollars to get another right. one to do that task. That's so true. This is this That's is a true. very very yeah. different kind. This is a what do we call it now? Everybody talks about this is a sea change. No, not sea change. Yeah, nobody says sea change. What, step change. They always call it a step change. change. Yeah, step this change. is this is going to change everything. That's what it is. Right. I'm sorry, my <laughs> phone has just gone off. Let me get into that. Even though it's my sure. best. My best and longest client. Oh I, man, you I, just oh wow, more I feel very privileged than my there best and longest client. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. I think uh, just to get back to one of the other advantages that Optimus has is, you know, if you think like, okay, so this robot works exactly as fast as a human. Let's just hypothetically right. say that. Right. The person has to go to the bathroom. They get their required breaks every you know hour, hour and a half, something like right. that. They get lunch. They go off shift. Somebody else comes in all the whole time. This robot could be working. It never stops, <laughs> especially yes. if it's plugged in. If it doesn't have to charge up its battery, it can just go 24 go. hours a day, basically. So you can work three shifts. So even if it's it four works shifts. exactly, oh, four, four shifts, shifts, right? Four shifts. Right. So even if it worked exactly as fast as human, it's right. four X a person. Exactly. If you're running, if you're running a factory 24 hours a day, it's going to be able to do four shifts. Yes. Like so now, that's crazy. I found out one I found out one time that you never want to run any equipment seven days a week. Yeah. <laughs> so so no, I was going to say probably being realistic here, we could probably say four hours off for whatever. Right. You right. know, pull them off but the yeah. line, put yeah. somebody else in. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, you know, he, even he, if it even if it was only double a human being, let's say oh. let's say this thing was outrageously expensive to start and cost fifty thousand dollars, which I think given how small this robot is unless they just want to generate ridiculous profits that would get that would net them a very nice profit if they charge 50 grand for this robot okay so but as again as a guy that ran a factory for 28 right. years i will tell you that elon don't listen to this because we want you to sell them <laughs> we pay 100,000 we, we want to sell them for less okay <laughs> right i will tell you that as a manufacturer i would have paid 100,000 dollars for this robot Right. Right. I would have paid ten thousand dollars a month for this robot. Right. Not even I wouldn't have thought about it. Yeah. It wouldn't have, yeah. I wouldn't have had to uh, uh I told this story on another channel the other day, so I hope I'm not, you know, boring your your people again. <laughs> it's all good. But, um my son needed to do a paper. He was a management class at, at uh, Cal Poly Slow. Right. And and uh, he wanted to do a paper on um, minimum wage. Right. And I said, well, again, as a factory guy, let me tell you about minimum wage. Every single year, I look at the products that I'm making in Santa Fe Springs, California, and I have to think about, can I automate this product? 
Right. Should I take this product overseas? Or is there some way to speed up my people so that I can remain competitive? Right. Right. Because if I continue to make it in Santa Fe Springs, California, and I don't automate it as well as right. my competitor, or I that my competitor goes overseas and is able <clears> to <throat> buy it for less than I can. Right. Those employees are out of business anyway. Right. As am I. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's true. And the other that's people true. in the plant that may have been able to stay in business, they have to go home too. Right. So every right. single product, a manufacturer that has any brains at all, every year at least, maybe more than once a year, right. is contemplating automation, contemplating offshoring, contemplating speeding up somehow. How can they make the product faster uh, and, and maintain quality? Everybody does that. So when you're right. talking about minimum wage, the minimum wage employee Let's let's say let's really talk about it. Let's say let's say yeah. they're in uh, the worst place in the country right now. They're only 15 years old, and they're only worth seven dollars an hour because the right. kinds of jobs they can do can only get that owner seven dollars an hour worth of value in right. terms of adding to products or adding to services or whatever. Well, that means that if he has to pay seven fifty an hour to that person, that person doesn't get the job. Right. Because that $750 an hour product is not going to get made, or that right. $750 an hour product is going to get made overseas, or it's going to get automated. Right. It, when it, it will never be able to tell enough people that. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> it's never true. understand why the right. minimum wage is, the, is what it is. But right. you can also see it around the country today. Nobody's working for a minimum wage in California. No, of course not. Not a single, not a single human. Okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We didn't have to raise the minimum wage in order to get. No, the market determined. And so right. uh, people that work at McDonald's right now are starting at $20 an hour and the minimum wage right. is not $20 an hour in California. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, even if you do that, if you, uh, I mean, especially if you think about a full-time person, but um, because then of course you have to tack on an extra 50% at least for all the benefits that you have to pay oh, yes. them. So, you know, suddenly right. that seven bucks an hour becomes something like 11 bucks an hour. So, right. you know, right. so, but anyway, but you know, even at just the flat out $7 an hour, I'm trying to do some rough calculations in my head. You're looking at 280, 280 a week. Um, $14,000 a year. Yeah. $14,000 a year. So, I mean, at that point, you know, <laughs> depending on what Optimus costs, you don't, but the thing is, if you had, Four of those people working on a shift, then it goes is twenty eight thousand and fifty six thousand dollars a year. So oh, no, no, suddenly... no. If Optimus, if Optimus was twenty thousand dollars, right, versus a fourteen thousand dollar an hour employee, fourteen thousand right. dollar a year employee, right, you buy the you buy the Optimus every time. Yeah, it, it wouldn't. There would be no argument on it, right? Because if you can get your money out in one year, right, that that's phenomenal. Right. It's rare, it's rare right. that you can buy a piece of equipment or machinery that's going to get you your full money out in a single year. So no, twenty thousand dollars a year would replace every any any employee that it could replace today for twenty thousand dollars would be every single person in most in most businesses right. if it if it could do the job. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's a little bit scary, actually, isn't it? <laughs> you know, when you actually compare that to like a I minute, mean, it's like, holy crap, if they actually get it down to fit, you know, 20 grand ever, then, then yeah, 40 you're grand. right there. 40 yeah. grand. I, yeah. I, as a factory guy, I would have bought 10. I mean, right yeah. now I had a hundred right. employees. I would have, I would have bought 10 of them today. I would have just, I would have been in line waiting yeah. for my 10 yeah. <laughs> robo I mean, my 10 uh, robots. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's something. Okay. I, uh, before we get too deep into this, I know that you have, no, but I mean, you have a provocative idea. And so I want to make sure that people have a chance to hear this out. So you go for it. Cause we've been talking about the robots. So here we go. The robots are coming. <laughs> so, yes. The robots are coming. But what my provocative idea is, is that this right now, the, uh, is right Elon Musk and Tesla should immediately spin off the entire robo uh, robot the entire optimus division call it 
the Optimus Company, or I'm sure he'd come up with a better name because <laughs> he's really good at naming things. So right. I put that up on Twitter the other day, and oh my gosh, it was overwhelmingly <laughs> Randy, no, right. we wanted to be part of Tesla. We wanted to grow it. We we're right. stockholders and we want to see the advantage. And I'm like, wait a minute, guys. No, 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 no. So I've now I I should have had my arguments lined up the first time. So I, right. I lost my chance to give my ah, best my best argument the first time. Right. So right. now I've organized my my arguments and we'll see if okay. uh, we'll see we'll see what I'm sure that there will be um comments. <laughs> oh, I, I can't imagine people <laughs> writing comments about this. Let's hear your arguments. So let's okay. lay it out. I will be your first responder from your arguments. There and you then go. other people can chip in and Perfect. we'll see what, we'll see what the okay. community says. So yes, number, go for Number okay. one, currently the, the street, the Wall Street value of Optimus in Tesla is less than zero. Less than, oh, because they think it's burning money. Okay. They think it's burning money. They think that Elon's distracted. They don't think, you know, they think that he's taking away from the main mission. And we've right. heard all those arguments. As soon as Optimus was presented a year ago, everybody's like, oh, well, that'll just distract from the mission. We need to get, you know, we need to get to robo taxis. Right. You no. Know, so there's all these people that are <clears throat> very concerned. And has the price of uh, of Tesla gone up since AI Day 2? <laughs> or has the price of Tesla gone down since AI Day 2? Right. So we can say that it's about the Twitter acquisition all day long, but guess what? That same period of time is when Optimus, and we all thought, didn't you? Right. I thought that after AI Day 2, the stock would go up. I've kind of learned that whatever I think it should do, it'll do the opposite. So, <laughs> the day that the, the day that Tesla posts a, a quarterly loss would be the day the stock would would go to the moon. I I have no idea. Anyway, okay. So so yeah. argument number one. Yes, <laughs> the Optimus is worth less than zero right. as it currently stands today. Okay. okay. If we look back, I think we have to look back 15, 13, 12, 13 years. We look back to when app the Apple App Store was introduced. Uh, do you mean the physical ones or the or the, the app, app store? store? The store itself. Oh, 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 yeah, the online one. Yeah, uh -huh. the online store. Okay, I think it was twenty ten, so app, about twelve years ago. Store, yeah, when the App Store was introduced, the street gave it zero mm -hmm. value. That okay. was a mistake. <laughs> well, they, you know, the argument was, well, ninety percent of the revenues come in from the phone. You know, not. 90% of the profits come in from the phone. Well, a year later, <laughs> I is it, these are not real numbers. Right. Let's say a year later, 2% of the profits were coming from the App Store. Right. Zero value. Yeah. Well, but 90%. Three years later, it's <laughs> 6%, 7%, whatever. But there was a day at which the App Store hit Wall Street's brain. <laughs> right. And they went, oh my gosh, this is free <laughs> revenue. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's just growing like this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and somebody gonna... else is doing your work for you, basically. It's like, come <laughs> on. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the value of the company went from $1 trillion to $3 trillion. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Mostly on the back of the App mm. Store. Because what have they done other than the App Store since? Nothing, just really. I mean, they do have this. It's a very cool it's a watch, watch, but it's a that watch, you know. That so, yeah. didn't do much, no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So my second argument is, the street is not going to give any value to Optimus for years, right. just like they haven't given any value to energy. They haven't given any value to the insurance company. They haven't given any value to the, to the uh, what do you call it? The, um, the uh, charging stations. Right. Oh, yeah. Can you, can you imagine <laughs> right. if, if General Motors had owned Shell? Right. I know. It almost, I keep feeling like the government should be stepping in and saying anti monopoly like monopoly stuff. And so I know, shh, don't tell anybody. But I'm like, why okay. are they not doing that? Because Tesla's setting up basically to own the cars and the chargers. It's right. like, <laughs> so my second argument basically comes down to that Wall Street is not going to give any value to Optimus. Yeah. yeah. Even if they do have a thousand hand built ones in 2023. Even okay. if they set up a factory line in 2024 and make a million of them in 2024, mm -hmm. it will probably be 2025 before before the street actually starts valuing the okay. Optimus as anything significant. All right. Okay. Can All I right, ask you a question here yes. in between? 
are you talking about a spinoff into another public company or into a private company? Like, a what's the idea? In, a spinoff where the current shareholders right would get exact they would get a a dividend of right optimus shares okay. so you would get exactly the same percentage as you own now okay okay and so if then, you had like 100 shares of tesla you get 100 shares of tesla bot whatever roughly, the company was it called it doesn't matter what the, it's yeah the but some sort of percentage right. yeah okay gotcha. you get the yeah. same percentage as you own now yes right okay so, so yeah, so that would be the spinoff. That should make shareholders happy then. That's just like a bonus. It's like free cake. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It gets better. Okay, okay. 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 <laughs> so now I'm going to add on to that previous argument just a little bit. People have to go back just a little further. And okay. General, General Electric became the talk of all MBA programs and the talk of Wall Street because everybody looked at General Electric and said, this company is worth five times what the street is giving it in terms of value because nobody right. is valuing the subsidiaries. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Jack Welch had built this thing into one of the most amazing companies in history. He would certainly be considered by most to be the best entrepreneur of the 20th century. Right. right. And, and General Electric became this massive thing, but General Electric had... This little, little subsidiary over here that was not associated with the mission. Right, right. They had another subsidiary over here that had nothing to do with that <clears> subsidiary <throat> and nothing to do with it. Yeah. You know. Right. So they had all this stuff that was getting zero value you know, on Wall Street. So they started what? They started spinning all these off to get the value out of them. Right. Okay. Right. And that became a major MBA level subject for at least the next 10 years as other okay. conglomerates decided that they should also spin things off. So that's that's another example of where there's no value and unlikely to be value in the near term. Right, right. All right. You mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, we're going to say it very quietly again. <laughs> a lot of people have said over the last three or four <clears> years, <throat> there's going to come a time when the government's going to break up. It may not be the U.S. government. It may be the European right. government. So That's true. That's true. Who knows which government it'll be that'll say this company is too big. Um, it has. It's just we just can't have a company this big, even if even if they can prove they're not monopolistic and that they're giving right. away their patents and that they're right. willing to give away their charging methods. <laughs> which, and, by and the way, they just did. Awesome. 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 <laughs> but they're just I did an open big. letter back in July and asked for that and they did it. And I was like, look at me. <laughs> so, so, so it's going to get broken up someday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So why not do it on your own terms? Yeah. Yeah. Start spinning off now. If the if the product line has way more value right now today on right. the street than it has as part of the company, so so you would say like this would if it's not really an IPO if you I guess it is an IPO yeah well I no you the spinoff is right. is not okay the spinoff right. is a spinoff yeah then you do an IPO so yes, you do right, that route. right. Right. Okay. You dilute. But then, you know, so then you have this chance to really boost the value and help out for anybody who's a Tesla shareholder. You suddenly get like a huge extra jump in value that you don't have otherwise. So, yeah. You're, you're getting yeah. it. You're getting okay. it. Okay. You're going to be okay. my accolade. You're going to be. Well, I mean, the, the only downside is that, and but I don't think this is a downside because I'm going to say why, which is you could say like you're going to remove a lot of value out of Tesla itself as a company. And so that would not be as valuable anymore. But clearly elon has this x holdings corporation thing so yeah. it kind of doesn't matter how he shuffles all the pieces because that's the way it's just like alphabet you 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 the company alphabet you right. stay out of trouble with monopoly stuff by having spacex and boring company and Neuralink and tesla and tesla bot or whatever it is but exactly. they're all still under one umbrella company they're well they're still <laughs> under elon musk you know, yeah, yes. but I mean, they're under Elon Musk. They cross pollinate. I mean, what, right. what you were saying, one of the huge moats, what Brian was saying was one of the huge moats is that Tesla is able to cross pollinate with other companies. So, exactly. you know, you're not just going like, you guys can never talk again. Like, right. you know, it's like a divorce and it's like Tesla and Tesla bot will never speak again. It's like, no, they're going to be very intimately connected even and so. And that was even, one, and, yeah. And that was one of the arguments that came up in the Twitter discussion that happened the other day. Right. Was well, gee whiz, you know, the the technology 
Optimus needs the technology from Tesla. Well, right. they sell the yeah. technology. You know, yeah. they sell them uh, as much time as they need on uh, Dojo. Right. Um, <clears throat> they send over engineers as necessary to work, and you know right. wh whether they're on who's W two, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, you right. trade them back and forth, whatever. But yeah, I don't see any reason why that would really slow down either company. Uh, yeah. by virtue of having them in, in two separate, it may, they may even still be in the same building. You know, you, <laughs> here's our wall. There you are over there. And it's like sweet A and sweet B. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. So you're, right. so you kind of, you, you kind of started to play around with my number five argument. Okay. Which is the stockholders would receive this stock from the breakup, which right. would immediately increase the value. So Tesla would not go down in value. Right. Because As you're not, saying right now, because it's not being valued into the company. Not being valued so, yeah. at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Tesla doesn't go down a value. And all of a sudden you get a chunk of stock that all of a sudden the street goes and looks at as an independent company and they go, oh, that's got value. Now, right. how much value? Okay. The question is how much value? Well, I don't know about, what was that? A little over a year ago or a year and a half ago, two years ago when Rivian went public. Right. Right. With no yeah. car. With no parts, with no, with no right. building, with no anything, <laughs> and what was the value? I think it was eighty billion at IPO, something like that. Eighty, and I think it might have gone as high as hundred for a couple of days. Right. So I don't know with the with the Optimus robot, <laughs> where you actually have a walking around sample yeah. who's yeah. actually doing real work, and who has an unlimited TAM. Right. Right. Address, uh, total addressable market, for those who don't know what TAM is. Total addressable market, according to Elon, is unlimited. There is no end to the number of robots <laughs> that you can build that can do useful things. I'm starting to get excited oh. about this idea. I'm like, wait a second. This, this, like, suddenly everybody who wants to get in at this IPO could be sitting on a gold mine. Like, it's okay, just, a, so now, it's like the new value creation. It's like suddenly money comes out of nowhere. It's like, poof. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So now, okay, so step one is you have the spinoff, the value becomes known right. out there, but it's still it's still a private company like <clears throat> space does. It's a yes. private company. So the value is kind of, oh, well, that's what we think the value is. Okay. Right. But the next step is, is that you'd IPO it. And let's say that the IPO, let's just for fun, we'll say it's a hundred billion. Right. I think it could easily be the same as, as Rivian was. So right. let's just call it a hundred billion for this IPO because Everybody you know right. would be buying it's, that IPO. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lars would be buying it and John would be buying it and, <laughs> and, and, and David Lee would be buying it. <laughs> right. I mean, you, you go down the list, Rob Maurer would be buying it. Stephen oh, Mark yeah. Ryan would be selling one of his apartment buildings in order to buy <laughs> yeah. it. Because he's I never going to sell the Tesla be... shares. So he's going to have to sell something to get. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Everybody that you and I know would be going, would be selling their clothes. They'd be selling their their furniture in order to get in on this IPO. Right. So it might don't, it might be valued at 100 billion when it go when it first goes out, but I think it would go up from there. Right. As it then matures, it's not going to take three to four or five years to get the real value, because right. as it starts to do useful work and as it starts to have its own revenue. And as it starts to have its own profits and as it starts to build more factories, then everybody's going to be valuing it on its own merits. Right. Right. So if it's and, and there will be specialists examining it just by itself, not with everything else getting in the way. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. now who knows? Maybe it's a trillion dollar company in five years <laughs> uh, be, where it would never them. have been worth <laughs> would, it would right. never have been worth a trillion dollars within um uh uh tesla within five years because tesla will be worth 10 trillion in five right. years and so it'll just be a little division of right. tesla at a trillion right. dollar value yeah so, yeah all right okay all right so that also means we all get a great chance to be in at the ground oh level yeah yeah who's Elon Musk all of us who really wish that we could get in on SpaceX would love to be able to try this. <laughs> yeah. Another perfect example. See, you're, yeah, reading my, yeah. you're reading my script. I didn't even give you a copy of it. <laughs> I everybody, everybody. Are you kidding me? We're all sitting around waiting <clears throat> for the Starlink spinoff. Right, right. So I said, so I said to the people that were arguing with me, I said, 
well, wait a minute. Aren't you just sitting around waiting for the Starlink spinoff? <laughs> you know, why, what's any difference between the Starlink spinoff and the, and the Optimus spinoff? We would all be thrilled with an, we should be thrilled with that idea. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so the, that was my number seven is that there would be a line around the block. Oh, I'm sorry. Number yeah. six. Number six. Yeah. I forgot one. Everybody said from the beginning, and I agree with it, as a guy who loves mission statements, mm -hmm. Optimus is not part, mm -hmm. not part of the Tesla mission. Right. It but you heard you heard my rewrite of their mission. I think yes. trans. I think transitioning the world is their new mission statement. I, I think I, that that's a good mission statement. But anyway, yes. But it's a. <laughs> but, but okay, as somebody who's written dozens of mission statements, it's right. overly broad. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's overly broad. Yeah. Transitioning the world to renewable energy is right. probably the best mission statement I have ever ever seen. Right. It's so clear. It's what you want nice. is clarity. Yeah. You want it to be. Identity, you know, something that somebody can repeat to their friend, you right. know, something that you can get on board with, um, all those things for a mission statement. And this mission statement is incredibly cool. I'd right. like to keep that mission statement. Okay. And yes, you can squeeze the robot into that mission statement because it'll make factories faster and it'll make cars faster. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Right. But no, I want I want it to have its own mission statement. Right. Okay. <laughs> so maybe something that. like changing the nature of labor would be the the Tesla bot like uh mission I, statement. Even even the one that Elon has already said, mm. eliminating repetitive, boring, dangerous jobs. <laughs> What's wrong with that mission statement? That's a pretty good that's a pretty good mission statement. That's a phenomenal mission statement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so I I think uh, you know. Having its own mission statement would be game changing. And so there's my seven. I posted those on Twitter today. Nobody even blinked. I didn't even get a right. I didn't even get a comment. Uh, you know. <laughs> but but maybe this YouTube video, well, I'm sure the comment board will be filling up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just excited because you know, I we've talked about this before. It's a bizarre thing for me to realize, but there are actually people at Tesla who pay attention to this channel and, and yeah. many other ones too. But I know, I just, I don't feel worthy of that. But anyway, that is something. And there are people inside the AI division who work on Tesla bot who actually pay attention to this channel. So it, it's just, it will be, I mean, I don't think that the two of us could sway this, obviously, but okay, now, it might at least ping somebody's brain to go like, huh, that's an well, interesting idea. <laughs> now, now, th now think about it. Only uh, eight weeks ago, 10 weeks ago. Right. Um, um, uh, uh, I'm going to forget. I'm, I'm always so horrible at names. Um, <laughs> that's all good. Um, a big Tesla mama or not big. Uh, oh, Tesla boomer mom. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla boomer Tesla mama. mama. Yeah, I think that's it's something along this. It's those words. I don't remember the exact order. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. She was unknown. She was that's an unknown. True. That's actually Twitter. true. That's true. Okay, what did she do? She beat on and beat on and beat on the S&P thing. Beat on the S&P. Alexandra, what's wrong with yes. me? Why can't I? I <laughs> yeah. Alexandra. <laughs> Alexander Murs, she was an unknown on Twitter, right? Just right. just eight, ten weeks ago, yeah. And all of a sudden, the S and P responded. Yeah, that's true. Not only did they respond to her and send her a letter back, but then a few weeks later, they responded. Or was the S P or the other one? Uh, one um, of them. One of the Moody's and also Moody's. Is Moody's yeah, first? Moody's. Yeah, I think. I, well, I think it was Moody's. She was, but also the S and P. Yeah, but anyway. But, but one of them actually it had a big effect. <laughs> it had an effect. Yeah. Okay. So who knows? It may be you and I that are starting this entire there you go. idea. Well, it's you. It's not you and I. It's you. But I mean, I don't want to take any credit away from you because I think it's a brilliant idea and I would never have thought of it. I will say one other thing, though, because here, collect. this is a collective change that was made. Um, I was at uh, the Tesla um, Shareholders Day back in August. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And Elon was like, you know, he was talking about the next version of full self-driving. And he said, he said, oh, it's a really big change. Maybe we should just call it 10.69 instead of 10.14, I think was the next yeah. one. And everyone cheered and went crazy. And he went, fine. Okay, we'll call it 10.6. So literally, you know, I mean, that's not a huge thing, but he changed the name of yeah. The yeah. next iteration of this thing exactly because it was funny and yes. everybody thought it yes. was funny and so yes. that was you know i he is not the kind of person who will 
be standoffish about just doing something because he likes the idea. So, oh, no, yeah. no, no. That's the beauty. Um, you know, I, I wrote that other book you may remember called The Elon Musk Method, where right. I talk about the right. 16 things that differentiate Elon from the rest of humans. <laughs> right. <laughs> about. Yeah, pretty but much. But there are 16 things that people can use in their own business right. or their own management career. There are 16 uh, things like leadership and but I go into the details of how he does it uh, that folks can use to to run their own businesses better and there's no doubt about it that one of those things you know he is just so humble right that he's willing to hear from Twitter yeah you yeah. should change this to this we should right. change that to that and what he says he, one of his statements is you have to have this feedback loop and you have to be willing to accept criticism and, and commentary right. from people that you, that in your surroundings. Right. Well, that's, I don't know how you get to where he's gotten and, and retain that kind of humility. It is absolutely mind blowing. Right. I was actually, uh, weirdly enough, I was talking to, uh, it was Ellie in space yesterday. Oh. Um, <laughs> she was driving cross country, or like anyway, but so phone call and, and, um, uh, we were talking about that. And I said, I went to school with Jeff Bezos to college with him. There's not a chance in hell I would ever be able to talk to this guy. And yet, oh, I remember that the reason why was because I wrote Elon Musk something. I emailed him something oh, yeah. that I thought was kind of funny. And he actually responded to it. And I was like, I was like, what? There's no other. There's not a single other person who's worth over a billion dollars in the world who would I could ever even dream of having that sort of a <laughs> response from. It's just crazy. <laughs> so. Well, you need to you need to you need to send him a uh, the next email you send him is have you read the Elon read, Musk? There you, there you <laughs> <laughs> Can you give it a rating on Amazon real quick? Yeah, just, <laughs> even a thumbs up on Twitter. You know? <laughs> thumbs, yeah, that's right. Give it a thumbs up on Twitter. <laughs> that would make my day. It would make my year. Go. That's I make right. my life. <laughs> I <know>. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah. See, so uh, there's so there is a crazy. little bit of uh, maybe stuff that nobody's thinking about. Nobody's thinking about these moats. Uh, nobody's thinking about the the marketing levers that he can still pull. Um, when people think that this is not going to be by far the largest company in the world, uh, equaling Apple plus Aramco. Um, right. uh, I, I I just have to laugh. I see it as being bigger than than Apple plus a Romco times two, yeah. Uh, and and uh, and even in my lifetime, and that's really <laughs> that's right. really saying something. Yeah, I. Then the question becomes like, what? You know, if we start thinking bigger and start thinking about X corporation that will have Twitter, and assuming he can ever get the dumpster fire <laughs> under control. But, you know, let's assume that he can do that and start making this thing into, I, I keep calling it sustainable philanthropy. That okay. his, his, his companies are doing philanthropic missions. Yes. But every other philanthropic entity in the world pretty much is like, please give us money so we can do these nice things. Yeah. Elon's like, no, I'm going to make money and right. do good things. And exactly. that is a cool thing simultaneously. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's something that's kind of, that's so disruptive. I, I don't know. Nobody yeah. seems to pay any attention well, to that, but I'm like, with, he's disrupting the world of charity right now. Yeah, <laughs> philanthropy. Uh, so, so, so to your point, yeah, I love that idea. We're going to put that in the next book. Oh, By there way, we the go. Book, okay. The next book is the Elon Musk magic. magic. Yes, absolutely. Next summer. Okay. Yes. Anyway, but yeah, to your point, I just thought of a perfect example of that would be Starlink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, could, exactly. Exactly. He could have gone into the business of Starlink intending to destroy AT&T and T-Mobile and right. all the rest of them and say, okay, I'm going to put up mm -hmm. something that is going to be so much better and faster than cable and, and all these fiber optics and all this kind of right. stuff. I'm going to put you guys out of business. That would have been a normal business mission. Right. Instead, his business mission was to reach the 2 billion people that have that are underserved or completely not served uh, on exactly. the planet right now. And so that's and, a it's a th yeah. philanthropic mission. Yeah. yeah. And at the same time make money off of it. And it's just it's it's one of those things that when you look at it in the rearview mirror it's like well obviously 
but nobody has really thought. I think it maybe comes out of this whole Victorian era that the idea of philanthropy was that people who were already landed gentry and had a lot of money and stuff would think about the poor riffraff and help yes. them. But yes. that's a very antiquated idea. Why can't you do a business that will also make money? <laughs> right? yes. There's no exactly. reason why you can't do that. So I know that's crazy. It's amazing. Mm. Absolutely. Amazing. What? Yeah. You have to think back. What, 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 what if libraries had originally been profit making? Yeah. Right? What if hospitals, what if hospitals had originally been profit making? How would that have right. changed? How would that yeah. maybe have changed things? <laughs> right. But I mean, again, but not the sort of, I mean, I, I, I get a little cringy with hospitals because they feel but they're predatory. profit making now. They're profit making now, but they're also kind of predatorily. Their their mission is what's wrong. And, and maybe it requires yeah. Elon Musk. I mean, maybe if you took a Tesla in 50 years after Elon has, I don't know, turned yeah. into one of those like heads in a jar or something and he's off <laughs> doing whatever it is, you know, but like, you know, so he's out of the picture. Uh, that someone else couldn't run it that way because the mission would fall apart and they would start to say like, oh, let's just take as much profit as we can. Right. And right, right. I feel a little bit that way with Apple. I'm a huge Apple fan, but I feel like after Steve Jobs passed away, it became like you were saying, really nothing, nothing big has happened since then. And it feels yeah. like the mission has sort of fallen and it's now like, well, how do we just maintain our lead <laughs> rather yeah. than try to yeah. do anything new? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I think uh, I, if I remember it correctly, uh, Steve Jobs, when he came up with the iPhone, his right. thought was, you could have a computer in your pocket, right? And and that and that, you know, you could look at that just from a product standpoint, but you could also look at it from the standpoint of what it's turned out to be, yeah. Which is the one, which is the one product that you cannot separate from human beings without. Um, killing them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But but I mean, yeah. even beyond that, I mean, again, I don't think that Apple went into this with a philanthropic idea. Right. right. But you're looking at a lot of places in the world. I mean, if you think about prior to wireless internet on mobiles, mostly right. that right. before that, you had to build out massive infrastructure, copper wire, you know. Uh, tons of hundreds and hundreds and thousands right. of miles of this stuff to right. everybody's house and all of these things. And now you've got people who live in very disadvantaged areas of the world who may not have a ton, but they have a phone and that gives they them do. access to the internet. And right. my gosh, once we have Starlink, it goes from like really low, slow access to the internet to super fast internet. You know, then right. the, that, and and if, if anything is a great equalizer in the world, it's education in my Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. Yes. And holy crap, I mean, look what you've, I mean, just look at YouTube. <laughs> you basically can go like, how do I do X? And it doesn't matter yes. what X is, there will be a video on how to do that. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is. And, I, and I'm sure you do, I do all the time. I mean, it's oh, like, yeah. YouTube, YouTube is my instruction book. I don't look at the instructions that come with the product. I go look right. at the YouTube version. Right. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Okay. So just, I know I'm just harping on my, this thing, but this is the Apple watch ultra and it has this cool new face on it. And for whatever reason, it wasn't there by default. And I was like, well, crap. So how do I access the new face? And, you know, within 30 seconds, it was like, oh, duh, that's how you do it. So it's just like, holy mackerel. I mean, that's yeah. a dumb instance of it, but you can do anything from that to teaching yourself to programming in any language from complete scratch yeah, you know, which could then get you a job that could then get you out of poverty. I mean, that's that's an incredible opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's it's um it's unbelievably where we've come, and of course, that's part of what the new book will be about. The yeah, the, yeah. you'll have to wait till you know probably uh, midsummer, maybe the end of summer yeah. next year to get the Elon. <laughs> I've seen schedule. the table of contents, and it's very very nice. Um, it's very, very and we're yeah. I, we're adding to it. But we've got more stuff. We've thought right. of more stuff even this weekend. <laughs> so yes, the uh, the Elon Musk <laughs> the Elon Musk magic is all about abundance, yeah. and uh, a lot of people don't think we have abundance now, but man, that's because they're not thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, By the I, way, I think it's worth at least bringing up the fact that approximately 2 a.m. tomorrow morning for us, but it'll be after this video is released or before okay. the video. Anyway, we're going to hit 8 billion people worldwide. The global oh, population yeah. will top out at over 8, million, 8 billion people. So, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then in about 20 years, start declining. Yeah. That's according to Elon and me. I've been saying, I've mm. been talking about population bust 
for, I don't know, 20 years now, because it's right. obvious. <laughs> if you only yeah. have 1.9 children per fertile female, then <laughs> you're going to have to climb. It's, it's literally <laughs> going to have to go down. <laughs> Statistics right. are, you can't really argue with that. Yeah, math math so. is math. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, that's, I mean, and that's, um, but that's again, where I feel like something like Optimus could be incredibly valuable. Because if we do start seeing a population level off and right. eventual decline, right. something is going to need there to be there to take <laughs> the labor that is going to, that already we have massive labor shortages in, hope in certain that, areas. I hope, you know, I hope that I can explain this in a short enough window that we don't lose people. But right. <laughs> there's something called the dirty job theory. Okay. Mm. Right. So post world first World War II, Japan says we'll do the dirty jobs. Okay. They would they would they didn't care. You could we'll make the right. greasy things, we'll make the dirty things, right. we'll make plastic. But that's how they that's how they elevated themselves very rapidly. But, yeah. but within 20 years, right. we don't want to do the dirty right. jobs. So the dirty jobs went to Taiwan. Right. Okay. Taiwan did all the dirty jobs. You can't get Taiwan to do a dirty job today. Right. So the dirty jobs went to South Korea. Right. And the South Koreans did it. There's no way. South Korea is probably the most advanced technological company country in the world. I was right. just over there a couple of years ago. It blows your mind yeah. how. No, it is. does. I was there a couple of years ago too, and it's like whoa. <laughs> yeah. So, so okay. So, so then China said, okay, we'll do the dirty jobs. Well, right. China's still doing the dirty jobs, but it's still get the price of the stuff in China starting to get up a little. Well, so they're not doing not recycling and stuff anymore. I mean, that was a huge devastation that happened a couple of years ago. Right. Is that so they now were like, Vietnam, no more. <laughs> Vietnam, right. Cambodia, um, and uh, uh, what's the other big, the big one down there? <laughs> um, um, well, Thailand's <laughs> down there. I'm trying to, that's not the one. Um, <laughs> Indonesia. In Indonesia. Indonesia. Yes, 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 yes. They're taking yeah. the dirty work, but China's skipped ahead. China right. says, we know that the Asians are right. all going to be not doing dirty work pretty soon. So right. they've skipped ahead and they're down in Africa and South America, yep. Yep. putting up companies and stuff down in those places to do the dirty work. Well, guess what? You're going to run out of countries. You're going to run out of places that are going to do the dirty work. So it you, and then the population starts to decline too. But let's just say in that same 20 years, most people say 19, uh, 2045 is when the population will peak and start going down. So before between now and 2045, you're going to have this end of cheap, dirty labor. You're not going to be able to import it into the United States anymore because it'll be they'll be doing it on location. They won't need to go to the United States to thrive. They'll be able to do the work in their home country. So the United States will go, where are we going to get labor? Europe will be, where are we going to get I labor? Agree. I Japan, agree. Korea, etc. South right. Korea. They, where are we going to get labor? So the, the people are all worried about a lack of labor in the future. No, no, no. Yeah. The, it's not going to be a matter of you being able to find a job, at least for the really, really long term. Right. It's going to be lack of labor, not to not a, a lack of jobs. Right. Um, right. So that's that's not going to be an issue. And I agree. And I've thought about that too, that the dirty jobs theory. I can't, I'm like, it's been playing hopscotch, you know, in, in back, I would say up until World War II, certainly the United States was doing that. I mean, for, essentially yeah. World War I and World War II were at least on the Western half of that. The United yeah. States was the ones that did all the dirty work and made a right. huge amount of money and right. became right. the superpower that we have been on right. the back of doing really dirty, gross jobs and shipping that overseas so that you could kill yep. people. So, you yes. know, <laughs> regardless of the ethical nature of that right. whole thing, that's how the United States became a superpower. Yeah. So, yeah. But then, but then in the 1950s, people were like, no, I don't want to do that anymore. Start, you know, sending it over. And also you had countries like Japan going like, we'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you had, you, so you had the tech, you had the technology in the United States. Yeah be able to do these higher level jobs. You had the education right. to be able to do the higher level jobs. Right. And so then people are saying, no, I'm not, I don't want to shovel coal anymore. Right. I can remember my dad taking the clinkers out of the furnace, you know, the, the yeah. coal clinkers. Yeah. People don't yeah. even know what a coal clinker is. Oh okay. no, if you hear the sound of it, it sounds like a clinker. <laughs> it's like <laughs> coal has a very distinct sound when it hits things. So, yes. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, so coal, um, uh, that's, uh, 
another quick story. People are all worried. People are all worried about the trans the transfer to electricity. People are like, oh, we'll never be able to do this. I was born a long, long time ago. So we'll just start from let's say 1955. In 1955, the my parents' home was run on coal. All right. Pretty much no everybody, electricity. No, we had electricity, but it was coal. Oh, okay. Everybody right, was, right, right. Yeah. So you had electrical coming in, but your yeah, heat, but it was oh gosh, yeah, heat, I mean, remember your heat when was I was cold. a kid. When I was a kid, like the electricity bill was tiny because you only had a few, you know, you had very, you ran some light bulbs and and not even a stove. It was like, yeah, that was I like gas. Think, yeah. Uh, yeah, we didn't have gas in the house. We did not have, a, yeah. we did not have a gas line into the house. Okay. Okay. So we were coal. Okay. Right. A year later, oil became cheaper than coal. And so we right. took out the furnace. I mean, I took out the, uh, the, 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 uh, the coal bin. And replaced right. the coal bin with an oil tank. And then they would come up with a pipe and put a pipe inside of your house. And right. the oil would go into the house. And then that would burn to, to make your house warm. Right. A year after that, we moved to the burbs. Right. And in the burbs, our house, the heating was and air conditioning was all done by gas. Yeah. yeah. So just in three years, we went from coal to oil to gas. Right. <laughs> okay. And it's like, now, hey. We've been it's... stuck. We've yeah. been stuck. For right. the last 50 years, 60 years, 70, whatever it is, we've been stuck with those with those three methods of heating homes and heating businesses. Right. But electricity, why, why is why why is everybody worried and concerned about a transition? I went through three of them in three years. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'll 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 even say a yes and to that whole thing. <clears throat> um, if you think about electricity usage, I was you you reminded me of when I was a kid, we had a very few outlets in the house. We we ran lights and the television set, <laughs> and I guess the blowers for the heating units. Right, you need the, electricity the radio, on the, the radio, and the radio, and things like that. So right, the overhead so, I mean, fan, the fans. But yeah, but I mean, there was there was no the the electrical usage was so tiny. Right. Now right. in this house, I'm running a computer, a couple of laptops, a bunch of phones and other peripheral devices, five TVs in the house, probably. Yeah, I mean, sure. you know, you start like, and a bunch more lights than we ever used to have. And, right. and a heat pump. I've got two heat pumps outside oh, yeah. that, are, that, are, that are what's, right. yeah. So that's electric. So it hasn't stood still. We've transitioned a huge amount right. of our, of our industry, of our energy producing needs right. from coal and oil and gas to electricity. electricity in yeah. fact, the, the gas company keeps contacting us and going like, Hey, do you want some gas in your house? You know? And we're like, no, not really. <laughs> you, know? you don't even have gas in your house today. No, we just, we have, we literally have electricity. That's it. So, nice. Nice. Yeah. I mean, we yeah, live in I, Georgia. It would be more difficult to do this in the North, like where I grew up right. in Northern Ohio, because it gets so cold in the winter, but, right. but the heat pumps were great for us. I mean, it's, you know, last night it got down below freezing and we're very comfortable. <laughs> you know, the well, heat pump works just fine. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that HVAC from Elon. Well, and I was just going to say, speaking of another company, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, probably that would honestly. Another uh, spinoff. Well, or it could go under the Tesla bot moniker, depending on what the mission statements were. But anyway, there you go. There you go. but yeah, 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 but I mean, but that is a whole other area that they haven't even gotten into yet. But they've built these beautiful high performance heat pumps that yes. are tiny. They I fit know. in your car. And I'm like, forget about. So the one problem that we have with our heat pump is the heat pumps on one side of the house. It blows through the ducts. And by the time it gets to the far end, not that much drops down oh, because most yeah. of the heat's gone out. And so the far end of the house, which is our bedroom, is pretty cold. I got so, you. So, you know, and I'm like, all we have to do is start creating mini splits where you have little baby heat pumps. Right. right so we right. could have basically a car sized heat pump for each room rather than these massive four ton things. And they would be really efficient. Plus the fact you put a little smart thermostat in there that's like, oh, no, there's nobody in the room, turn it off. Right. right. And and so oh, yeah. it could be roll. Oh, I mean, God, I know. <laughs> so that would accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy because that's it would right. Use it less could fit. energy. It would fit. Yes, it would, it would fit. fit. Yeah, it would so, definitely fit. <laughs> but it gets me very excited to think about stuff like that. And but here's another reason for a spinoff, <laughs> because Tesla Elon keeps going. We don't have time. He's like, we have plans to make these heat pumps. Right. We don't have time. It's like right. freaking spin that off. Right. Make that another right. company. Yes. Like then they I'm have sure all the time. I'm sure he's got a buddy or somebody that works for him that would love to run a new company. Yeah, you exactly. Know? I mean, 
Uh, he he's just on the board of directors to kind of guide yeah. it. And, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. so just keep, I, I think what you're, I think, you know, he keeps talking about how Tesla is basically 10 different startup companies or so. At least. Yeah. And so, you know, it's like you could start spitting these things off at this point and, and yeah, yeah. It, it even goes broader than Optimus, you know, like you can see the, the potential for them to be able to go faster by yes. spinning these off. That would be, I think, in my mind, the biggest thing. Because ultimately, aside from us shareholders who might get some more value out of it, the biggest thing that would happen with a company like Tesla, you know, Tesla bought the company or whatever, right. would be that that's the all they're focusing on. That's it. And you can hire yes. as many people yes. as you want to do this and work on this right. project. Yeah, no, and the focus, you're not the distracted focus, by all these other things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. focusing on the mission. That was, right. yeah, that was part of it. Yeah, so right. no, I, I think that I think that the number one reason personally is for shareholder value because you know right. like my kids need to inherit more than they're already gonna inherit. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> but I mean I think that there is a there's a philanthropic reason to do it too if you want to think about it that way. And that 100%. is yeah that that you will be able to do some of these things faster than you could all under the right. umbrella of Tesla. Right. Cause yes. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> All right. All right. We have been talking for a long time, so I'm going to wrap this thing up, but my brain okay. is kind of like going in overtime here. So I hope people who have been watching and I really hope people, um, I'll try to put chapter marks in so people can go, can skip to the, to the spinoff thing if they want to, but I hope people have been paying attention to this because, you know, you know, while it's just two guys chatting about stuff, these are not that outrageous. And there's oh. a lot of, there's a lot of very exciting stuff that could happen. In the in yeah. the pretty near future, <laughs> so, yeah. so there's there's not not a, not a doubt in my mind that the right. spinoff. I, I'm I'm now 100 percent convinced, and I just have to convince more than just you. Right. It's a, it's a good idea. <laughs> well, let's say let's hope we get a massive thing, and 50,000 people watch this, and we get 50,000 converts. So there, there we you go. go. <laughs> so there there that. Go. <laughs> it could happen. We could do that. So, all right. Well, thank you so much again, Randy. I really appreciate you spending the time, and it's been exciting working with you on the the Elon Musk mission book. I'm really looking forward to the magic book. I've been very busy this fall, but come. January or so I'm going to start cranking out some pages for that book as well and we have another one that's a uh, little skunk we works thing named, we, haven't, we haven't named that one we haven't yet. named it yet it's a skunk works book at this point but hopefully right. that'll that's be right. about a year your you know a little more yeah. than a year from now yeah. so yeah so anyway they'll be coming out so get that's the right. books get the mission get the method get the, get method, the mission get the, method. Yeah, get the method get the mission get the magic when it comes out and then maybe something else with an m i don't know what that is but <laughs> we're running out of good m words <laughs> so all right well thank okay. you again so much and uh, yeah, everybody great. let us know what you think in the comments and for sure tweet to randy i'll put his contact information in the uh description as well as the book obviously so you can go purchase that if you're interested everybody take care bye-bye